guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I am back home and I have a treat for you to end out the season before we bring you guys a steady dose of Executioner in Tornado. Probably at the beginning of next season, just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Probably going to be sharing a couple decks with uh, Royal and Viper to start out next week. But today we are here in the here and now. We're with Moogie, who a lot of pro players consider the best player in the world, certainly on ladder alongside Lapakati. And I actually want to show you a couple screenshots right now, guys, because I saw that Serge CS tweeted this out uh, uh, a week or so ago. Who, in your opinion, is the best player in the game? I'm sure a lot of you guys probably going to throw a balloon on the thumbnail. Probably suspected it was Pompeo. Pompeo, no doubt, one of the latter greats of all time. But right now, in the here and the now, I think it's the Lapakati La and, of course, the Mugi Show. So, Mugi obviously is an absolute beast. You guys know him a Japanese pro he's been around the game for a long time and he is at the top of his game right now this season the last few seasons he's gotten multiple accounts to top 10 top 5 even number 1 and 2 on the final day of the season so today I thought I'd invite him on the channel and just share his gameplay with you guys now this is the deck that he is playing right now you guys can see it it's the P.E.K.K.A balloon deck and I asked if he thinks that P.E.K.K.A is still going to be strong after the changes he said absolutely and I think that a lot of pros feel the same way how do you guys feel let me throw it to you is pekka still going to be viable is she still going to be meta i think she is as well with a medium range we'll have to wait and see but still i think that pekka is going to be fairly strong just not as pervasive not as dominant inside the meta in in, in, in the terms of being in every single archetype in the game so this is the deck it's a 3.3 elixir cost deck check out that elixir cost guys insane it's really cheap considering it does have the pekka and what is it it's essentially the minor balloon cycle deck kind of reworked with the pekka in there essentially we're seeing more of throwing the pekka in already existing meta decks and that's what you see when a card is dominant inside the game so i think this deck will still work just fine at the end of the season but today it's all about enjoying mookie's gameplay guys because this guy just guaranteed he's right now i think top 15 or so uh, I, I actually forgot to check in the beginning of the video or maybe I did maybe you guys saw and I didn't but he's like top 15 in the world right now above 7,600 trophies so we're gonna watch him live here the last couple days of the season and just enjoy the gameplay so here it goes hey look at the deck we're playing against guys it's the same deck so yeah needless to say this is an incredibly viable deck right now inside the game it looks like we might lose this left tower we do take oh uh, yeah we're gonna lose it to that balloon but hey we're going in hot here going in very strong we have the bats we have the ice golem we have the balloon gonna make contact bats are down musketeer on the tower and moogie making it look easy for uh, first game of the video here with a quick victory two towers to one against w w something or other let w z x there we go let's go ahead and jump into the next uh the next match guys actually let's check to see where he is first 15th in the world 76 52 all right guys here we go inside the net oh against sensei beast sensei a really good player and he is the curse of CWA man he always beats pros when I have him live on the channel when I have them live on the channel here he is the uh, the thorn in the side of CWA pros so let's see if Moogie can be the guy to take him down starts out with well we know it's 2.9 right we see the skeletons and the archers so of course it's gonna be interesting to see how we deal with this deck we do have a, a few tools at our disposal namely the P.E.K.K.A. we also have the balloon against the expo and the miner so let's see what moogie kind of goes with here he starts out aggressively hitting opposite lane uh with the miner musketeer and balloon combo that's going to go ahead and dispose or at least take that expo down to about a quarter health as we approach about two minutes remaining here in this second contest of the video so the thing about moogie that makes him so good is, is he's very versatile but he excels at playing any cycle deck and i think that that's kind of a testament to 
a player's overall skill level if they can pick up a cycle deck and just absolutely dominate at it we've seen Mugi play a variety of different cycle decks it's not like he's a, a, a one trick pony so to speak he just plays a bunch of different archetypes all being relatively fast a lot of bridge spam he was really really good back in the magic archer bridge spam like high skill meta of a few uh, a few updates ago a few months ago I should say and then he's been playing everything from uh, of course bait to to balloon to minor cycle just plays a lot of different archetypes so here we go sensei beast here uh we have a little bit of a damage advantage uh, going into about 15 seconds before sudden death uh or not sudden death but rather double elixir time we we reload but you can notice how he plays these high musketeers to kind of set up and a missed fireball there by sensei beast so we're gonna go in with a full health musketeer here comes the balloon as well but tesla is so strong guys we don't have anything to reset either so we will get a little bit of minor chip damage but we missed that snowball there so what could have been a very lucrative push on our end really results in nothing there nice smart defense there by sensei beast leaning on the tower of the tesla and that's one of the reasons why 2.9 is so strong right now in the meta to the dismay of many players it's just incredibly uh strong because of the power of the tesla especially against decks like this with pekka inside of them so we don't get a connection there with that uh, left tower balloon, but we do get the death damage, taking that tower down to 2543 here with 19, 18 seconds left, presetting the Tesla in the right. He does have Expo in hand. He's going to go ahead and use it, Sensei Beast, that is, pulling that balloon into a chain of two Expos, going to prevent any tower damage, I think. Let's see. Yep. Nice job uh, chaining that balloon away from the left tower. Meanwhile, we reload with a P.E.K.K.A. in the back here. I sense an Expo in the right, and here it is. Expo, Ice Spirit. Let's see how we deal with this. We have the Ice Golem in hand. We cycle the Skeletons in the back, and then we go with Balloon on defense here against this Expo. We also go with the Miner on the tower. Now that is going to be kited to the middle by the Archers. Archers protected by the Skeletons. Miner's going to chop away at one of those Archers. One survives in the left lane, and again, the High Musketeer. Here, mitigating any potential fireball value from Sensei Beast. Here we go with a nice golem at the bridge. Fireball comes down this time, not wanting to deal with that musketeer at all. Now we go in hot again here. Ice Spirit down kills our bats. Snowball misses those skeletons, unfortunately. We do not get the balloon to the tower. 45 seconds into sudden death overtime, 1691 remaining on the tower. Is this going to be a draw or... Can we, er, can we eke out a win here? I think Sensei Beast at this point has it, has it in his head. He just wants to defend, right? Nice Meyer to the front of the tower here. Going to score a few very valuable hits to that left tower, 14-22. So we got a ways to go here. Going to need a balloon connection, at least a balloon death damage. And you can see Relentless with the pressure is Mugi here in this match so here we go another fireball of uh, value for the opponent no he's not going to take it this time we go in with a minor hey here comes the snowball snowball connects there and we got to the tower 183 and that's gonna be gg very well played there pick up the victory against one of the best players in the game in sensei beast let's go ahead and check to see where we are in ladder and then go into the next match dude Nice victory against 2.9 there. Uh, ninth in the world. Be right back. All right, guys. Match number three against Omega Daniel from the Omega Squadron. Let's see what this guy has. How are you guys doing this season? What decks are you pushing with? Have you hit a new personal best? Uh, let me know. Oh, the Lava Hound comes down immediately opposite lane with the P.E.K.K.A. at the bridge. So, yeah, let me know how you guys are doing. We have Snowball in hand. Snowball comes down. Gonna take care of those minions, and just like that, left tower is down. That's exactly what how you want to handle a lava hound matchup, lava loon matchup uh, with this deck or lava anything. They drop the lava hound, you go Pekka opposite side at the bridge, just like Mugi did. And now we're gonna be leaning on this musketeer on defense, but Miner does come down to assassinate our muskie. We have skeletons down to chip away at that miner, but zap in response from the opponent. That's gonna go ahead and uh, get some big damage onto our right tower. We have the bats ready, and oh the arrows come down this could hurt not only one hit with a mega minion but we do lose about half health a little bit more to that right tower but it doesn't matter we actually take down their left tower so i'll we'll take that start now you're uh this is a this is the luis deck that uh omega daniel is playing right now so it's he has minions as uh one of his last cards and 
I forgot what he has for ground, maybe a tombstone or something. Anyway, we'll see what it is, but we go in with a miner attacking immediately as they drop the Lava Hound. So because we played that miner, couldn't play the P.E.K.K.A. Let's see what Daniel does. It's gonna be a difficult push to stop here, guys. So here it comes, the Lava Loon. Of course, Balloon, right, Ash? <laughs> Trying to figure out what his last card is. This Balloon, dude! This is a tricky deck to play. The uh, I shared this deck with Luis, and a lot of you guys were like, dude, I can't play this deck with only one ground card in it with the Miner. I think he actually might have the last card. It might be a ground card as well, but either way, it's kind of difficult uh, playing with only Miner and whatever his last card is. <clears throat> Again, it could be... Uh, well, we'll see. Anyway, so a nice uh, connection there on the right tower with that balloon, taking it down to 1253. Now we go in right side again with the ice golem and the balloon. It looks like Daniel is happy to just sacrifice this tower. I don't know if we even needed those bats there. Here comes the arrows. So bats are, are down, arrows are out of hand, and here comes the uh, minion horde here for Daniel. Meanwhile, Musketeer defending on the left-hand side. Miner again there down on the Musketeer. We try to protect the Musketeer with that Ice Golem. Balloon to the King Tower for us. Bats to defend the Balloon here from Daniel on defense. Musketeer zapped away. We snowball that Balloon into our tower. Oh no! Our left tower is going to be down. Arrows comes down. 1302 remaining. Make that 907 on our King Tower. 866. This is definitely going to be a. Hey, that newsflash. Going to be a three crown, guys. Here we go. It's going to be another balloon coming down. Oh, man. Daniel with that quick balloon may have taken the advantage. Guards are the last card, not minions. Here we go. It's going to be a zap coming down. Is the balloon going to hit? Make. Oh, the balloon does make contact. No. Oh, the BM comes down. The sad face by Daniel. That hurt, guys. That's That, that hurt there. Let's go ahead and, and jump into the next one. All right, guys, here we go into the next match against uh, Zagaboot. Zangaboot. We'll see what we have uh, in store, what he has in store for us. It looks like it's going to be a mortar minor bait deck or some sort of a mortar deck. Here we go, getting a little bit of a discoloration. I apologize for that on my uh, iPad. Try to fix that for the next match. Either way, we have about 30 seconds into this match. We answer with a P.E.K.K.A., but he does score a mortar hit onto our right tower. So P.E.K.K.A. Musketeer going against, hey, surprise, surprise. I should have known. It's the P.E.K.K.A. mortar deck. What type of deck doesn't play P.E.K.K.A. in this meta right now? A lot of you guys are very sick of it. We go ahead and we predict uh, Spear Goblins or something with the Snowball. The opponent doesn't use anything, takes that Balloon hit, uses Spear Goblins instead at the Bridge. We have an Ice Golem for the Spirit Goblins. Nice Ice Golem there. Gonna buy time for those bats to take care of that P.E.K.K.A. And we mitigate damage onto the right tower. So one minute into this match, we already know what the deck is. Any of you guys using this deck this season? Yeah, it's uh, it's another annoying P.E.K.K.A. deck. P.E.K.K.A. Expo, P.E.K.K.A. Mortar. Uh, definitely a thing right now inside the game. So Musketeer doing work here on defense. We do take a little bit of chip damage halfway through the match here, guys. Let's see what we do. In double elixir time against a matchup like this, against a deck like this, we're going to be able to build up big pushes, and it's going to be difficult for the opponent to stop them. Meanwhile, we do connect with the Musketeer on that right tower. Very, very nice connection there. 1057 remaining. Let's see how we respond to this mortar here. We're just going to go ahead and not mess around and use a balloon. Snowball comes down taking care of those uh, spear goblins as well, forcing a fireball out of the hand of uh, the opponent. <laughs> I was going to try to say their name again, but I think we're going to go ahead and pass on that. So again, 1057, nice damage advantage, crossing over into double elixir time. Let's see, reloading, uh, with, knowing that fireball's out of hand, we reload with the musketeer in the back, going against the P.E.K.K.A. So a P.E.K.K.A. of our own. And let's see how we handle this. I'm probably going to go in the balloon here. Let's see what we do. Uh, skeleton's there to, to tank a little bit for that musketeer. Here comes the balloon immediately. We have Miner going in as well. Snowball there for the bats. Nice mortar by the opponent. Also, nice catch of our Miner with a Miner of their own. This balloon is not going to get to the tower. Death damage will kill a bunch of those spear goblins, though. Again, Musketeer doing a nice job as well. Those skeletons kiting, but we do take another 400 or 500 damage to our uh, right princess tower. Here we go. It's going to be another aggressive balloon and the miner ready to go there. And again, that mortar comes down. Bats come down. Responding immediately is the snowball. Nah, zap from the opponent. Good luck. Good game. That's it. Very nicely done there. Uh, by Moogie picking up a victory after that unfortunate three crown loss in the previous one. Let's go ahead and uh, keep this uh, start a new win streak here, guys. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go against Nova Sami. Sami. All right, so here we go. Let's see how we start things off here. Again, it's an expensive, or excuse me, it's a cheap deck. 
But we're not playing it super aggressively until double elixir time. You can really notice on those first matches there of the video that he really ups the pace. By the way, guys, I read in the comments a few of you guys asking to play, incorporate at least one or two replays so we can kind of see our uh, the pro's hand as he's playing. So I want to start that, but we just had a maintenance break in the game. Uh, so I wasn't able to have Moogie share any replay, so I wasn't able to do it on this video, but I hear you guys loud and clear. We'll try to make that happen uh, moving forward here on the channel. So Goblin Cage, I talked to a couple pros today, uh, Royal being one of them, asking what his thoughts are on the Goblin Brawler speed. Will it still be just as strong? He says, personally, doesn't even see it as that big of a nerf at all. The movement speed change of the Goblin Brawler, he still thinks it's going to be one of the best cards in the game, and he recommends you guys still go ahead and level it up if you were already doing so. So just like that, look at that push! Oh my god, man. Well, that was a monster push. It was a P.E.K.K.A. a balloon. It looks like he's going to give up here, guys. Wow, just like that. GG, assuming he's playing graveyard deck, splash yard, but no match for Moogie. There we go. That was a fast victory. There we go. Two in a row. Let's make it three. All right, guys. Here we go. Against Black Panther. All right, another really good player, and that's why I love these end-of-season videos because we get to see some of the best perennial names on ladder go head-to-head -head when it all matters, when it all counts towards the very, very end of the season. So let's see what he's playing. Oh, it's a furnace. I'm going to go out on a limb and saying he's playing Royal Giant, which has fallen a little bit out of the meta, but not this deck and certainly not Black Panther. Black Panther, another guy who, when I see him, I think of uh, bridge spam decks, uh, but this time it looks like he's 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 pretty pretty sure he's playing a royal giant here. Another archetype he's really strong with, and there it is, royal giant, the big fella in the back. We go ahead and we use the peck in the back. He drops the oops. Things not looking good here. Of course, he sees the balloon. And, you know, a lot of players probably thinking they're not playing against P.E.K.K.A. when they see that balloon coming out. Probably just thinking it's a traditional balloon cycle deck. But no, this is going to be an easy defense here for Moogie. Does take a couple hits from that Royal Giant, but Musketeer ready there to support that P.E.K.K.A. against the Baby D, forcing a Lightning out of the opponent. But that Lightning might have been an overcommittal by the opponent. We go in. And here comes a balloon. That's going to make contact. He has nothing for this balloon right now, guys. Miner also on the tower. That's going to be tower down just like that. Well, okay, I take it back. The Curse of Ash. Calling it too early. That's nothing new here on the channel. 581 remaining on that left tower. Still a really nice uh, push there. Again, kind of recognizing the lightning might have been a little bit of an over committal by Black Panther there against that Musketeer. He obviously really wanted to take down the Musketeer, do some damage to that P.E.K.K.A., but immediately heads up play by Mugi attacking, trying to punish that early lightning play, and that's something that you guys can do as well, right, is if your opponent uses a lightning in single elixir time, even if they get value oftentimes, or against, let's say, tower value, so against a Musketeer and a, a building, uh, oftentimes in single elixir, that kind of gives you the green light to go a little bit aggressive on your next push and catch them off guard again, speaking single elixir time. So that time, not able to get any troops to that right tower. Let's see if we can get some bat uh, chip damage on the left. We can't. So here it comes again, playing that Musketeer low, baiting out that lightning out of the opponent. Let's see what we have. We have Ice Golem in hand. That's going to do a nice job on the defensive end and Bats here as well. Nicely placed Bats to take care of that Mega Minion. So again, able to cycle down to another Musketeer. This time there's no lightning in hand by Black Panther. We go in with the Balloon. Miner's in hand. Miner's going to go down. Miner makes contact. Let's see, two seconds remaining. Can we get the balloon death damage? I think we can, maybe. Let's see. Uh, no, we can't. All right, so it's going to be, oh boy, this is actually going to be a big push here. But again, MVP of this match seems to be, in my opinion, the Ice Golem here doing a lot of work on defense. And again, Miner used defensively. Don't be afraid to use that defensive Miner if you need it. So here he comes again. He has lightning in hand, but not enough elixir to play it here. We're going to go so, go ahead and snowball cycle. We also have Miner back in hand. Miner comes down onto the nice safe spot, or the non-prediction spot, I like to call it, of the opponent's tower. And we pick up another victory. What's that, three or four in a row? Let's go ahead and do uh, one more match here, guys. Be right back. All right, guys, here we go against Polaris. Last match of the video. A lot of gameplay for you guys in this one. And this time, we, we fixed the connection issue. I apologize about that. That was kind of annoying. I need to uh, get a new lightning cable for my Elgato. 
maybe if any of you guys are curious, I think I posted oof, about six months or, or maybe even closer to a year ago on Facebook how I record my videos. Actually, use an I record with an iPad Mini here. I don't want to raise it too high because it's uh, connected, obviously. And uh, I, I connect with an Elgato HD60, and I have a lightning cable that I run through OBS, and that's the magic behind the scenes here. Not too difficult. I, I encourage a lot of you guys, if you have any questions, just drop me, drop me a question in terms of the setup or any advice. If you guys want to get into YouTube, always happy to support new content creators in the game, and uh, we'll see what happens. Just drop me a, a, a comment uh, below in the first hour if you can. And I'll be happy to answer it. So here we go. We're going to make contact with this balloon on the left tower. Nice start again here uh, by Moogie. So playing against uh, one of the strongest decks in the game right now. It's the uh, the um, uh, the P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam deck with the Dark Prince and Magic Archer. And again, this one I believe has Poison as the spell in lieu of Lightning. And it's really, really one of the highest win percentage decks in the game this season will be interesting after the Dark Prince change and after the P.E.K.K.A. change if this deck is quite as strong, but I expect it to still be incredibly viable. And uh, there, with that, with just like that, the left tower goes down thanks to the shovel of the miner. So about 75 seconds here left in regulation. All we have to do is hold on. Now, the opponent is smart here. He'll stack a, a bunch of troops. Poison comes down because the problem with a deck like this it, we, it looks like Moogie has this on lockdown, and Moogie's a million times better than I am. But the problem with a deck like this is they can build, a, and it looks like he's going to try to do it right now, Polaris, right? He can build a huge P.E.K.K.A. push behind this P.E.K.K.A., and there's nothing we can do to stop it. We don't have, like, a giant skeleton, right? We don't have, and this is exactly what he's going to do. So let's see if Moogie can stop this. We don't have a spell, right? And look at this. It's an Ewiz, a Battle Ram, a P.E.K.K.A., we're going to go ahead and try to assassinate that Magic Archer. We need to get that Magic Archer down, and we don't. Magic Archer is going to go ahead and take care of that Musketeer. Nice angling there, and this is going to be right tower down, right? I mean, look at this, guys. Dark Prince P.E.K.K.A. Nice Ice Golem there, though. Hey, Moogie might have this on lockdown. Oh, we missed the, the Magic Archer with a Snowball there. We need to get rid of that stupid Magic Archer with one HP left. Two E-Wizzes, one Magic Archer, a Dark Prince, and a Bandit. Oh, man. All right, so Ice Golem is down. Still able to kind of like, you know, hang on for dear life here. But now it's going to be difficult because essentially he can do the same thing here in Sudden Death Overtime. And that's exactly what he's attempting to do here with the P.E.K.K.A. in back. We're going to try to cycle the two P.E.K.K.A.s ourselves Because uh, we do have a faster cycle than him. But I'm not even sure if that's going to be enough here with the Dark Prince and the P.E.K.K.A. He leaks an elixir or two there. We split skeletons. Again, trying to get to that other P.E.K.K.A. Uh, uh, the Musketeer way in the back there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Look at this push, guys. Poison comes down. We have the P.E.K.K.A. in the corner. It's a P.E.K.K.A. A bandit. Two Dark Princes. Oh, gosh. This feels like a three crown to end the video, guys. I don't know what we can do against this matchup other than just... Getting lucky in the single elixir time. If you go against a good player like Polaris, it's going to be tough to hold them off. And the GG comes down from Moogie, knowing there was really nothing he can do. And that's the downside. Even the best players in the world, even the best pros in the world, will still lose matchups that are difficult like that. So don't feel bad at home, guys. And feel free, as with any deck I share on the channel here, to make substitutions that make sense for you, for your ladder range. Never be afraid to do that with any deck I share. Speaking of decks, we will have the deck link in the description below of this video, guys, along with Moogie's stats and player info. So what do you think? Is Moogie one of the top players in the game to you? If not, let me know who you think the best player on ladder is inside the game right now. Guys, thank you for watching. Huge shout out to Bren Chong and and Stats Royale, my YouTube partners. Check out their information below. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.